Welcome to our All Saints virtual Sunday worship service. This is the first Sunday after Pentecost. I'm the Reverend Vicki Moradian and I'm delighted to welcome you. This morning I'm uh, so glad that you can be worshiping with us. You might want to take this opportunity to download your bulletin. It makes it so much easier to follow along with the service. And at the back of your bulletin you will find our ministry notes and in those notes um, we have uh, opportunities and things that you might be interested in joining or being involved with um, for both children and adults. Um, this is our last ACE class of May and we will be taking a hiatus for the summer months and we'll be um, joining together again for our adult formation um, in September. As always, I wish to thank you for your time and your talent and your treasure. Uh, we deeply, deeply appreciate your support and your prayers. And this is how we can continue to come to you. Thank you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship, and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please join us for our opening hymn. prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, 
and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 29 Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is the voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the womb, into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it has come or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven, 
except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. I find it slightly ironic that this Sunday focuses on, in my humble opinion, one of the worst possible themes for a sermon, the Trinity. And yet, the Sunday also features some of the most interesting stories from the New Testament. As for the theme, Trinity Sunday is the only Sunday oriented towards church doctrine. And I've always found the prospect of preaching on the Trinity not just daunting, but downright dicey, and I am not alone amongst preachers in that feeling. I mean, the Trinity? Goodness, who really understands the ultimate mystery, much less wants to make an effort to put 15 minutes of discourse wrapped around the subject. And yet on this Sunday, we also get the story of the Great Commission and the Great Promise, I will always be with you in lectionary cycle A. Jesus' fantastic promise that there are some things his disciples can't hear yet, so the Spirit will guide them, us, into all truth in time, in lectionary year C. And then this year, lectionary year B, we get the magnificent story of Jesus and Nicodemus. Now, these texts are chosen because embedded in each is at least a passing reference to Jesus, God the Father, and the Spirit, each member of the Trinity. But perhaps the paucity of passages about the three members of the Trinity should tell us something about trying to preach on the Trinity. So this week I'm going to focus less, okay, actually not at all, on teasing out the theological implications regarding the Trinity. We have a lifetime to do that. And instead look at the story itself. And in particular, one specific element of the story. In addition to containing the world's most famous Bible verse, John 3.16, not to mention the following verse, which again, in my humble opinion, is just as important. The story of Nicodemus offers a picture of a man who is curious about Jesus, who maybe even wants to believe, but struggles. At least he struggles once he actually gets to talk to Jesus. Notice that he comes to the conversation with a clear affirmation of Jesus' connection to God. <clears throat> Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. In response, Jesus immediately jumps to a huge assertion about being born again or anew, or as our New Revised Standard Version translates, from above. And that's when Nicodemus' curiosity turns into struggle. Now, this is a fairly common technique in the Gospel of John, as the confusion or misunderstanding of Jesus' dialogue partner gives Jesus a chance to elaborate, to teach. So after Nicodemus' initial confusion stemming from taking Jesus' words literally, the only other thing Nicodemus says is, how can this be? Which gives Jesus a good excuse to talk some more. Well, all well and good. Certainly there's a lot of substance in what comes next. This gospel passage is full. Whether it's 
on the nature of being born anew or in experience or in exploring the implications of verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life or as I mentioned earlier verse 17 which reveal the character of God who comes only to redeem and save the world out of love, not to condemn. God's intent to save the world, the word in Greek is cosmos, is all the more powerful when we understand and realize that cosmos, world, across John's gospel denotes an entity that is at complete odds, complete animosity with God. Yes, God loves this God-hating world so much, enough, to send God's only Son into it. But what strikes me this week is that Nicodemus is one of the few side characters, that is, not one of the disciples, that appears at several points in John's Gospel. First, here in his main appearance. Next, near the end of chapter 7, when Nicodemus, if not exactly standing up for Jesus, let alone proclaiming faith in him, nevertheless reminds his colleagues that according to the law, they should not judge Jesus before giving him a trial. And for offering that reminder to his peers, he is rebuked. And then third, he makes an appearance a third time, this time after Jesus' crucifixion, when Nicodemus accompanies Joseph of Arimathea to collect, anoint, and bury the body of Jesus, the one just executed by the Romans. Again, perhaps not quite the same as standing up in an assembly and declaring his faith, yet, nevertheless, a significant step forward as by his actions, Nicodemus declares his allegiance to one who had just been executed for a capital offense. This is what I think makes Nicodemus such an interesting character. He is the only side character, as far as I can tell, who shows up at multiple points in John's gospel and grows in his faith. At first, he brings questions and is confused. He later invites others to slow in their judgment. And he finally risks publicly honoring the one just executed. Faith, at least in Nicodemus' case, takes time. And I think there's a model in that for us. For some of us, perhaps coming to faith was easy and fast and strong, and we've rarely doubted. And if that is the case, all we can do is give thanks for that experience. But for others, maybe most others, faith comes in more in fits and starts, two steps forward and one step back. Or perhaps at times, things seem really clear. And at other times, things just seem plain confusing. Or maybe faith feels a lot more like an endless series of questions rather than an easy and forthright affirmation. And for those of us like that, hearing Nicodemus' story once again can be particularly comforting and instructive. 
I have read somewhere that Nicodemus is the patron saint of the curious. I love that. I think I'd also like to claim Nicodemus as the patron saint of all with an uneasy or restless faith. Those who aren't satisfied with easy answers. Those who keep questioning. Those who want to believe and also understand, but at least to believe even when we don't understand. Even more though, I think this story says a lot not simply about Nicodemus, nor about us, but also about God. God is patient. God doesn't give up. God, if God keeps working in and on and through Nicodemus across three years and 16 chapters in God, in John's gospel, God will keep working in and on and through us also. No matter how long it takes. And if there's a tie to Trinity Sunday, maybe that's it. We don't have to understand the Trinity to be part of the church the body of Christ created, redeemed, and sustained by the triune God of love. Thanks be to God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, earth of, all of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the, the only, only Son, of, Son God, of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God, God from God, light, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 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 The Prayers of the People Inspired by the Spirit, we now offer our Sunday prayers to God in the name of Jesus Christ, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the fulfillment of the mission of the Church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the liberation of the children of God from the bondage of fear, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the consolation of all those who struggle with doubts or disbelief, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the renewed witness to the gospel among Christian people in positions of public trust, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our assembly, as we hand on the faith of our ancestors from one generation to another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the power to live out the promises of our baptism, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the sick and suffering, the lonely and the dying, 
especially Jessica, Paul, Barbara, Alex and the DeHaan family, Gary, Gray, Marnie, Lee and Roy, Reverend Amon, Jock, Joanne, Bill and Jen, Elvia, Elvia Diantha, Courtney, Ginny, Jean, Virginia, Peggy, Judy, and Samuel. For those on our minds and in our hearts, please add your own petitions silently or aloud. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of the Holy Spirit, with Mary, the mother of the Son of God, and with all the saints in light, let us commend our lives and the lives of one another to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who are facing the coronavirus, for all who mourn their dead, all who have contracted the virus, those who are quarantined or stranded away from home, those who have lost their employment, for those who are homeschooling, those who fear the present and the future. We pray for physicians, nurses and home health aides, medical researchers, teachers, those who keep food on our tables, and all those working on the front lines for the common good Fill the aching in our hearts with your merciful power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, with tender love, we call you our Abba. Answer the prayers of your children gathered here, for we rely on you and have confidence in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. While we are not able to receive Holy Communion together, we can celebrate a spiritual communion. A spiritual communion is a devotional that anyone can pray at any time to express their desire to, re to receive Holy Communion in that moment, but in which circumstances impede them from actually receiving Holy Communion. Let us pray together. O Lamb of God, in union with the faithful gathered throughout your church and remembering particularly our own church community, our hearts long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me And we continue together. Blessed Savior, I love you above all things, and I earnestly desire to receive you into my soul. And although I cannot receive you in bread and wine, I remember and trust your words. This is my body, this is my blood given for you. I invite you into my heart spiritually. 
As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy Thy will be be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Forever and ever. Amen. We love you all. And we continue to pray together. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in our hearts in the fullness of your strength. Be our wisdom and guide us in our right pathways. Conform our lives and actions to the image of your holiness in the power of your gracious might. Overcome every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom and keep us strong in faith, hope, and love until we can meet at your table again who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Live without fear. Your Creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and cares for you as a loving mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessing be with you always. Amen. The peace of the Lord always be with you and also with you. Please join us for our closing hymn.
Mighty God in three. 